Everyone knows what a Red Bull is. No, no, not that Red Bull, this Red Bull. Yep, yep, that's the one. That's why you don't delegate to interns, folks. Anyway, we've all seen the notorious energy drink, right? It's in supermarkets, bars, pop-ups, and convenience stores worldwide. And the infamous brand name is slapped on every cool, dangerous, crazy adrenaline event you could ever think of. It's the most popular drink of its kind worldwide and has been for a number of years. But the company is much more than just a pick-me-up beverage. In reality, it's a marketing giant. With a brand value of $9.9 .9 billion, and since its introduction in 1987, over 75 billion cans have been chugged down. Considering that the drink itself actually costs next to nothing to produce, the $4 or so price tag draws in an insane amount of profit. So how does Red Bull spend all of this moolah? Crack one open and let's find out. All right, let's kick things off with a fun little anecdote. Imagine you're sitting at your desk, bored out of your mind at work, staring at pictures of cats, seconds away from dozing off and probably getting fired, when bam, two young, attractive Red Bull reps step out of their decked out Mini Cooper. You know, the one with the giant Red Bull can on top and come through the front door. With their big smiles and free offerings of liquid energy boosts, they've saved the day. All hail the dazzling Red Bull reps. Anecdote aside, Red Bull sends little winged agents to all kinds of events and workplaces, giving out freebies to brighten people's days and to maintain brand awareness. Considering that the private Austria-based company is worth a smidge under 10 billion bucks, a few freebie cans here and there would barely even make a dent in Red Bull's bank account. That's great for us consumers because, hey, who doesn't love free stuff? And of course, Red Bull gives you wings. Wait, can we still say that? But I want to be a dragon. Red Bull might be a pick-me-up concoction of liquid chemicals and sugars, but the company is first and foremost a wildly successful marketing entity. With this in mind, free giveaways are just another marketing prong, helping to make that sweet, sweet money in the long run. This concept is just a tiny part of Red Bull's cunning brand strategy, known as experiential marketing. In fact, Red Bull spends a mere 20% of its marketing budget on traditional advertising. The rest goes basically to content creation, sponsorship, and that thing we just mentioned called experiential marketing. So you're more likely to see a Red Bull-sponsored event, which they pay bucket loads for, rather than a Red Bull billboard, for example. Okay, speaking of sponsorship, have you ever heard of the Red Bull Air Race? You know, the one where the tiny planes do a bunch of sick barrel rolls and nosedives and all that jazz? How about Red Bull Crashed Ice, where skaters speed down icy ramps necking around hairpins in a no-holds-barred test to cross the finish line in first place? It's sort of like Olympic speed skating, except like a million times more awesome. Then there's the Red Bull Cliff Diving Series, windsurfing competitions, rock climbing tournaments, and the whole Formula One shindig, but we'll touch on that in a second. Throw in ice climbing, BMX, parkour, and pretty much any other cool sport you can think of. So what do all of these things have in common? A. They're all badass breakneck sports that only the daring attempt. And B. They're all officially sponsored by Red Bull. The funny thing is that it's evidently not a drink actually designed for sports. They even say it on their website. <clears throat> Red Bull has not been formulated to deliver rehydration. Anyway, so as you can see, Red Bull is heavily invested in the extreme sports realm, and that investment does not come cheap. What this does do, however, is cement an association with crazy events and successfully has given Red Bull a very cool, badass image over the years as a result. This coolness appeals heavily to the younger generation who are usually either juggling two jobs, pulling all-nighters to hand in final papers at school or university, gaming 12 hours a day, or just literally drinking it because it seems cool. And that's exactly what Red Bull wants. Every aspect of Red Bull's marketing process is reflective of its brand image and central message. What is that exactly? Drink Red Bull, get cool, skydive from spaceships, all the kind of stuff we do on a daily basis. All right, so not only does Red Bull fork out millions of bucks to put on all of these sick events, but it also shells out paycheck after paycheck to a number of star athletes across a range of sports. Ready for a quick 101 lesson on athlete sponsorship? 
Ready? Go. Step one, company gives money to famous athlete. Step two, famous athlete wears company gear, drinks company drink, yada yada. Sometimes it's subtle and sometimes it's unbelievably obvious. Like how the idea of a Big Mac suddenly worked its way into this video. Wink wink. Step three, millions of fans see the athlete repping the brand. Step four, fans buy said brand's product. Step five, profit. And that, folks, is the life cycle of sponsorship in a nutshell. So who exactly does Red Bull offload free money and merch to? Well, there's Ninja, aka Tyler Blevins, for one. That Fortnite streaming gamer dude with the rainbow hair who was the first esports athlete to make the cover of ESPN magazine. Red Bull actually created a color-changing stream room for the gaming influencer, equipped with all kinds of cool gadgets and way more TVs than one person needs. Then there's Jeff Aaron, who's essentially a dirt biking god. Anthony Davis, the 6'10 Los Angeles Lakers power forward. Terry Adams, the fearless BMX star. Luke Akins, the base jumper whose idea of a good time is free falling from 25,000 feet without a parachute. Kolohe Andino, the badass surfer. Parks Bonifay, the impressive wakeboarder. Amnesiac, aka William Barton, an esports Hearthstone player for Tempo Storm. Tyler Bierman, the freestyle motocross genius, and oh so many more. We'd be literally waiting around till the next zombie apocalypse if we tried to name them all. So yeah, Red Bull gives these guys so much freaking money, and considering that they sponsor athletes from all over the world, it doesn't exactly add up to pocket change. The other athlete worthy of his own mention is Max Verstappen, the Red Bull racing F1 driver. We'll give his Red Bull teammate Pierre Gasly some love as well while we're at it. Anyway, unlike the majority of Formula One sponsors, Red Bull actually owns their own team. In 2017 alone, Red Bull revealed that it spent a record $223.8 million on their Formula One team, which is just slightly more than your average McDonald's cashier salary. Over their racing history, Red Bull has forked over $2.3 billion dollars into their F1 presence. But how the heck does that number get that big? Well, obviously, the elite cars don't come cheap, for one. Plus, throw in the driver's salaries, the entire pit crew's wages, transport costs, repairs, event accommodation, all the free stuff they give away at Grand Prix events, and then the buttloads of advertising and marketing. And then more ads and more marketing, and that's how, folks. Of course, because they actually own the team, they gain income when Verstappen wins and all that jazz. Red Bull is also known to splurge enormous amounts of cash on absolutely ridiculous events and stunts, all in the name of marketing, of course. Let's look at a specific example, shall we? Okie dokie. So, back in 2012, Red Bull wanted to make a big splash. They didn't want to do something that would cost an arm and a leg if it wasn't going to become anything less than wildly viral content. Well, according to Red Bull and an Australian adrenaline junkie by the name of Felix Baumgartner, jumping out of a plane at 15,000 feet is overrated and boring. So they thought, hey, why not take it up a notch? Let's do something that's never been done before. And that's exactly what they did. On October 14th, 2012, Baumgartner flew approximately 24 miles, that's about 39 kilometers for all you metric users out there, straight up into the stratosphere over New Mexico in a helium balloon. Of course, what goes up must come down. So Felix ended up cannoning back toward Earth, free falling in a pressure suit and then parachuting to the ground. That free fall jump broke the speed of sound, reaching an estimated top speed of 834 miles per hour. Again, that's over 1300 for you kilometer lovers. Anyway, Red Bull was like, yo Felix, thanks for doing that stupidly dangerous jump. Here's the whopping 30 million we promised you. Don't spend it all at once. Nine and a half million people view the nine minute event known as the Red Bull Stratus Jump, and that was on YouTube alone. If you count the rest of the interwebs, it brought in 52 million sets of eyes in total. Hot damn. Was the $30 million Roonies that Red Bull forked out worth it for a measly nine minutes of fame? Well, in the six months after the campaign, American sales of their iconic drink increased by 7%, up to $1.6 billion. With the revenue high in the billions, 7% is an absolutely wild increase and a crap ton amount of cash. So considering that it was only a measly 30 mil investment, we'd say the answer to that question would be a big fat yes. Of course, Red Bull could couldn't attribute the entire growth to that single event, but it sure did help. And if you were to ask Red Bull CEO Dietrich Mateschitz, he'd say it was definitely money well spent.
Although keeping in mind that he's worth a cool $19.5 billion, yeah, billion with a B, he probably didn't even notice. And that's all for how Red the Bulla spends its billions. How many do you drink a day? Would you free fall from space for $30 million? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to The Richest, and join our notification squad. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time.